Hello YouTube! In today's video I'm going to go through fitting a wet kit for tipper application on a new DAF CF. This kit is a basic wet kit from Edbro which just moves oil from the hydraulic tank into the ram on the trailer. So let's get into this. First off DAF can put this air tank in the way so this needs to be moved from here to here so we can fit the hydraulic tank but more on that later. The way I move this air tank is I use as much factory parts as possible with the least amount of modification. This factory air tank bracket needs to be cut down as when it's in the new position with the lift axle up it catches at the bottom. Moving on, this tank needs to be spaced away from the chassis so I need to fit a small piece of box section here to move the tank off the lift axle spring hanger bracket. I've taken to drilling one side of the box section to 18mm and the other to 8 so that my socket passes through the original holes and through the holes in the box section spaceship. With this all welded up on a bit of paint, it's ready to be refitted later. We need to modify and cut this wing stay bracket down, as with the air tank now being moved back, we need it to fit here and still maintain the factory wing bracket and wing location, so it needs two sections cutting out of it. Trust me, you'll never know it's been cut. It's so over engineered for holding a little FTP wing, it's unbelievable. With this now cut we can get it all put back together and move on to the PTO pump. Slight bit of grease going onto the splines here because the book told me to do that. What a nightmare these PTOs are to line up. So light I can hold it up all day. Ever seen a technician use a crow's foot on a torque wrench? Well now you have. Now onto the hydraulic tank. These tipper valve seals need to be oiled before fitment. And also, more torque wrench action. Nice bit of liquid PTFE going on here, as I hate leaks. This fitment with a lock nut and an o-ring is such an improvement on their old design. We can now fit the filter and try not to throw the bolts into the hydraulic tank, as that's fun getting them out as they're not magnetic. So, to mount the tank onto the chassis, we need to relocate some bolts and change the top bolts from the shouldered daft bolts to normal bolts, as the tank strap pin design means I can't actually get the pins through the strap with a shouldered bolt. Well done someone who come up with that idea.
With the feet measured and mounted on the chassis and the strap secured, we can move on to the hydraulic pipes. I'd give anything to be able to cut these pipes to length, but with this being a one kit fits all, I will continue to persevere and wrestle snakes. Really wish I'd fitted these pipes before I fitted the tank due to the space, but what's harder than fitting a hydraulic tank? A tank with pipes on it. So once I've done my best Steve Urban impression, we can get back to some fabrication. I needed a bracket for the chassis to mount this 90 degree elbow. In order to do that, I've made a plate for a bulkhead coupling and it utilises an existing chassis hole to secure it. Once I was happy with the fitment and a bit of paint, it was good to go. A hydraulic system wouldn't be any good without a hand control valve, so we're going to pick up the air supply from the seat to feed the hand control valve and run the tip and lower pipes along this existing channel through a spare port in the bulkhead here. More fabrication now, as I need a plate for the hand control valve to mount where the ECAS remote used to be situated. I cut this plate to size, put a hole through it for the air pipes, painted it black and got it installed into the vehicle.
nice little sticker here to remind me what to set the engine speed control to later. Time to get the air pipes down from the cab to the tip of valve on the hydraulic tank. I try and follow the factory routine and run the pipes in conduit wherever possible. I then secure the hydraulic and air pipes with as many cable tags as I can before I fill the system with hydraulic oil. Once the system is full of hydraulic oil, I can check for leaks and run the pumping equipment to ensure correct operation. This ensures the system is bled and free from air. I can then cable tie the pipework to the catwalk and admire my handiwork. Hope you have enjoyed this little walkthrough of what's involved in fitting hydraulics to a DAF. If you have, please give it a thumbs up or even better, subscribe so you'll always be notified of my latest content.